Hey, Grandpa, what are you going to leave me after you die? Well, my dear boy, I'm going to leave you with a bunch of zombies. Yep, a bunch of dirty zombies in a warehouse. Don't spend them all in one place. Grandpa Yakuza was such a fun guy. So yeah, let's talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to another bloody review of Chainsaw Man for anime watchers. With one episode left, we are coming to this season's biggest showdown. This time, we have new devils and fiends, and also get to meet the future devil. And yes, I was right, he was that dancing dude from the OP. He seems like the type who will get along with Denji, but he and Aki are not exactly vibing together. He thinks Aki has a bad attitude, but he still makes a contract with him, and he doesn't even ask him to pay that much. All he asks is to live inside Aki's eye, which I don't think is the same as Imeno's condition. Another important detail is the future devil telling Aki he will have a cool death. That is the reason he gave him this deal without asking for something substantial. But in the manga, he says Aki will die in the worst possible way ever, so I guess it may be a translation error in the English subtitles. Of course, Aki doesn't care to know about his future. All he cares about is a contract with a devil that will help him kill all his enemies. We jump to Denjin Power, playing with Kishibi and still getting destroyed. But we do get confirmation that they got a lot stronger. Kishibi himself says that, and we can even see he's actually scratched a bit from their fighting. He informs them they are strong enough to join the upcoming battle. But if the Vision 4 will die, that means the mission failed and Denjin Power are not necessary. And if that happens, they will face Kishibi in a real battle, unlike the training they were doing. Denji is not worried, and he even promised Kishibi he won't kill him if they ever come across each other in such a way. After all, thanks to Kishibi, he is now stronger and can kill more devils and impress Makima. And by the way, am I saying his name right? Kishibi? Because I still don't know. From there, we jump to Kishibi meeting with Makima over drinks. Honestly, this guy is always drunk, so I wonder how much stronger he is when he is at full capacity. Makima expects him to keep training them, but he tells her he is already sick of them. He used to drink more and more when his trainees died. People like Denji in power have no rights and Kishibi looked at them as toys, so he figured he won't get attached to them. But we can clearly see those lovable idiots got to him and he does feel closer to them now, especially in his old age. And I checked it out and Kishibi is in his early 50s. Another apparent thing is that he absolutely doesn't trust Makima. He flat out accuses her of knowing about this operation, but still, she did nothing to stop all those killings. She goes on telling she was also attacked, but he doesn't seem to convince him. He simply tells her that he doesn't care how many devil hunters she will lead to their deaths. The only thing he cares about is knowing she is fighting for the side of humanity. She explains that she only wants to save people from devils. She was promised that if this operation is successful, the unit will get more privileges. That way, she can save even more humans from devils. She only wants to help. Well, Kishiboy doesn't buy that at all. He calls her a liar and she simply smiles back. And yeah, by now I'm pretty convinced Makima is some sort of devil in a human form, so she definitely has some secret motives here. We jump to Sword Guy and the Snake Girl awaiting the upcoming attack. As usual, I check the manga after I watch the episode and I guess I missed something in the anime. This guy says that the big boss was moved to the villa. And by the big boss, I'm guessing they refer to the new Yakuza boss. Because I'm pretty sure his grandpa is dead. But yeah, this is Chainsaw Man and I already learned more insane things can happen. Like Makima popping people's heads remotely, which also means that this Yakuza boss doesn't have anywhere to run. Sword Guy is looking eager to kill Denji, and the Snake Girl tells everyone she can revive him whenever he dies. So what's up with that? I already said that his condition seems very similar to Denji. Is it like pulling on Denji's ignition cord, or does only she can do this in his case? She also warns everyone to not get beaten, and then we see Grandpa's surprise for his grandson. Lots and lots of dirty zombies, which conveniently turn you into a zombie if they bite you. We jump to Aki and those two devil hunters who keep antagonizing him. We get to see how people from the outside of his unit look at them. They think they are all crazy. That's why they ask Aki how can he even think about killing the gun devil himself. A devil that killed millions of people, while he just lost to someone who killed just a few. They state that a lot of people lost loved ones because of the gun devil, which is reasonable if he killed millions. That's why they both joined the public safety, but they never would consider going after the gun devil themselves. They look at Aki as a dreamer who doesn't think rationally, and that makes them annoyed with him. Aki doesn't care about what they think. 
He knows he is not looking at himself objectively, but if he did, he couldn't go on doing what he's doing. He politely leaves them, and then the annoying devil hunter gives us a commercial to Coca-Cola, which is very good for you, by the way, and I love it so much. Yeah! Coca-Cola sponsor me. Coca-Cola sponsor me. Anyways, he makes sure Aki knows they are still on his side, and tells him everyone on his unit is crazy, so we better watch out. Here came one of the best parts of this episode, Makima meeting with the mafia boss. The group that attacked the devil hunters are his people. He says they were tricked into working with the gun devil. This deal was made possible by Sawatari, which is Snake Girl's name, apparently. The contract with the gun devil was $20,000 in exchange for guns, which just emphasizes the fact that devils also find money necessary. There is a certain degree of respect in the room, and the boss apologizes and offers the names of everyone who took part in the operation. He will give up those people from his own organization, so she can teach them a lesson. But Makima wants more. She wants the names of people from other crime syndicates as well. Here the temper changes and the guys behind her are becoming really upset. The mafia boss won't snitch on other organizations and he mentions the topic of necessary evil again. That will make them fight between themselves, which will allow organizations outside of Japan to take over. In his eyes, they are the necessary evil, keeping Japan from strangers. And he makes a joke about Makima's intelligence. At this point, we see how demonic she is. She took the eyes of all of their family members ahead of time before going to this meeting. She claims they have someone who can put them back, which is horrifying enough as it is, but also shows she expected the reaction. At this point, one of the guys tries to attack her, but with a single look, she stops him in his place. He starts bleeding from his nose and collapses. Makima goes on to explain they are not the necessary evil, and they use it only to justify their actions. And that is not what the public needs. In her mind, the necessary evil is always colored and controlled by the state, or the government. We still don't know if Makima is talking about her unit or just herself, but it is clear she wants to maintain this level of control. We still don't know what her objective is and what she wants to control exactly, but she is certainly doing it from the shadows. We seriously need more information about her. We jump to Sawatari and Sword Guy as they each go to face Denji and Aki. Meanwhile, Kishibi sends the devil hunters into the building, informing them there is absolutely no plan. He then continues to explain to the officers that the non-humans can be a threat if they escape, so he gives them a rundown of their powers. First, we have the Shark Fiend, which can swim inside solid materials, just like Mirio from My Hero Academia. He can transform into his devil form for a limited time, giving his head a much more shark-like appearance. The Violence Fiend. Now this one is interesting. Even though fiends should be weaker than they were in their devil form, this one seems to still be extremely overpowered. He is so dangerous that he has a mask that dispenses gas that weakens him. Kishibi warns them that this mask should never come off. Next, we have the spider devil, which by the way is my personal nightmare, which also can take a human form. But still, she has a stitch across her face, so you can definitely know she is not human. The last devil introduced is the Angel Devil, which is a unique case. He has no harmful feelings towards humans. We can see how calm he is even after Aki bosses him around. We don't know much about him, but we know that if you touch him, you would lose years from your life. This ability seems to only activate with skin contact and not through fabrics. Aki then faces a group of shooters, but they all start bleeding from their noses and collapse. Right after that, we see Makima leaving the mafia boss's house smiling, so I guess this is also her doing. Aki goes on and meets Sawatari. Here we learn the snake devil has some interesting abilities. He can spit out the devils he's eaten, so they are not actually gone. She calls upon Himano's ghost devil and tells it to attack Aki. She bleeds from her nose, probably also because of Makima. I mean, seriously, what kind of freaky power is this? The ghost attacks Aki, and we also learn that Aki's right eye can see a few instances into the future. That's the only power he got from the future devil. That helps him, but the ghost devil still manages to grab him and start strangling him. And that is the end of this informative episode, and now we are officially left with one more episode to go. What did you think about episode 11? Did you like it? Let me know what was your favorite part. I will see you all real soon in my next video, and even sooner in the comments. But until then... Don't forget to dedicate your hearts to humanity inside and outside the walls.